it's 2021 and I'm seeing a lot of the following. I'm seeing a lot of this glass morphism trend. I'm seeing a lot of these bright retro color palettes. I'm seeing a lot of these blurry gradients. And I'm also seeing a lot of people using grain slash noise uh, in their work. And so today we're just gonna have some fun and go ahead and go over how to create these effects and just indulge in some beautiful visuals. So let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Izzy from Flux. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's not wait any longer and just jump right into the very first one, glass morphism. All right, so um, I say we go ahead and recreate this uh, credit card. And just looking at it here, before we jump into that, so I, I do have the credit card ready to go. But before we jump into that, you know, really there are only four things going on here. There is a gradient fill and it's barely visible, but there is a gradient fill because you can see that there's light, the light is coming from the left or top left. Uh, so it needs a gradient fill, it needs a stroke. You can see that there's a stroke and that stroke also has a gradient. And finally, there's, there's a bunch of background blur going on, right? So uh, four things, background blur, gradient fill, stroke, and the stroke has a gradient. So let's jump into doing that ourselves. Okay. First things first, let's add a radial gradient. And we'll say the, we'll say, let's say the light's coming from the top left here. Uh, we'll make that white on both sides. Maybe reduce the opacity just like that. So we've got, we've got our gradient fill. Let's add a stroke to that. Uh, maybe a little thicker. 3.5. That looks good. And that stroke, of course, has a gradient itself. Lights coming from the left side. And so for the stroke gradient, it seems that uh, they, people you usually just use the, a lighter version of the background color. So that's what we'll do. Um, and so here, we'll just make that a little lighter since, since that's where the light is coming from. The other side will be a little darker. And finally, one last thing is the background blur. So we'll go ahead and add some background blur, thinking 30, maybe even a little more, 40. That looks good. All right, so glass morphism, check. You're just the trendiest of designers now. Anyways, next one. Uh, the sort of retro color palettes that I'm seeing so much of lately. And, you know, just looking at these, uh, they usually consist of a red, blue, yellow. Uh, and the reason for that is these are, these are basically just triadic color palettes, meaning that these are colors that are evenly spaced um, along the, uh, the color wheel. So in this case, you have a blue... Uh, red, yellow, and so I'm thinking it's something like blue, red, yellow, evenly spaced, right? Um, and so you have, so that it's a triadic color palette. Second thing is, they're, these are very saturated colors. So if you're using the HSL color mode, right? So create a quick rectangle here. If you're using HSL, right, then your S value is gonna be 100 right? Um, they, they usually sit right around here. And so uh, final thing is your lightness will be, I've been experimenting, it's, it usually sits somewhere between, uh, so lightness is the third value here, HSL lightness. It usually sits between 30 and 75, right? So let's go ahead and I've got this dull layout here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and create one of these super saturated retro triadic color palettes. And so we need three colors. We're gonna do a red, blue, uh, red, blue, yellow here. So let's see. So for the, uh, let's start with blue. So blue, I'm thinking somewhere around here maybe. Of course, it needs to be fully saturated and it'll sit somewhere between 
uh, 35 and 75, as I said. That looks to be about right. We'll do the uh, red. Red, again, fully saturated. And then maybe I'm thinking of a lightness of maybe 65, 68, so that it doesn't scorch our eyeballs. And then finally, yellow. So for yellow, maybe a hue of around 60, 61, that works. Fully saturated, of course. And so that it doesn't destroy our, our eyeballs, we'll go right around 77. That works. And so before I apply these to the actual layout, what's actually super cool about this, the triadic color palettes is they're super, super flexible because uh, they're super balanced in terms of harmony and contrast because they're evenly spaced on the color wheel. So we can, for, for example, we can, we can go ahead and make the background blue. We can make the header yellow or headline yellow and the button red. And that looks pretty cool. That looks pretty decent, but we could have done, we could have done any other sort of combination. It may have worked as well. So, uh, keep that in mind when using triadic color palettes, very flexible, uh, but keep in mind. So fully saturated, uh, and a lightness of around of between 35 and 75. Okay. So that one off the list. Okay. Next up is the blurry gradients. This has been, I'm, I'm sure every single one, every single person watching has seen this, uh, this trend sort of emerged this year. I'm not sure if it emerged this year or last year, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing it a lot this month, but, uh, this one's really easy actually. So I've got this blank layout and all it is, is we'll go ahead and add an ellipse. Okay. Um, and we'll go ahead and I've got some gradients here. So the two ways of doing this, we'll start with the first way where you, you can add a gradient to one shape. So I've got some gradients here by Alexander Zaitsev that I found on uh, dribble. And so we'll go ahead and give that ellipse a linear gradient. We'll go ahead and we'll grab this first one. Okay. So apply your linear gradient. And then after that, just go ham with the, with the layer blur. So we're going to layer blur. Bam. I'm thinking this guy's, this has to be something absolutely obscene. Maybe even more than that. 250. And then what you can do, we can do, we can make this super big, maybe throw it in the back, do something like this. We can even blur that more. 300. Yeah, you get the point. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, of course, this layout is like 25% done, but uh, that's method number one. The second way of doing this, we'll move us down. Second way of doing this is uh, just by, by using two different shapes. So in this case, two different ellipses and blurring those out and just combining them, just, make, just uh, bringing them close to each other. Uh, so a lot of people are doing that these days. Let's go ahead and, and give that a shot. So I'm thinking let's do three ellipses and we'll grab, we'll grab this, uh, this Instagram esque gradient. So first ellipse, um, actually let's, let's blur this out first. Let's give this a massive layer blur of 300 and we'll grab this sort of purple. Uh, we'll bring that to the corner here. All right. Uh, duplicate. Let's make this a little smaller. We'll grab this pinkish color. Okay. And maybe we can make that a little smaller. Duplicate that. And grab the sort of orange there. And I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe we could reduce the opacity a tiny bit. Uh, maybe like 85, something like that. I guess you can play with it. But this is another way um, 
that I'm seeing people use this. Pretty cool. So you got your blurry gradients down now. Let's move on to the uh, last one here. So noise. So I'm seeing a lot of these um, poster slash magazine layout design inspired web design. That was a mouthful. But uh, and a lot of those kinds of layouts or compositions are using this uh, this grain or noise. And so two ways of doing this, of course, there's the old classic. So uh, by the way, I've got this layout that I'll be playing with. We've got the classic Photoshop, right? Um, so go filter and noise, add noise, right? And of course, you can just completely ruin it and do that. And but anyways, adjust the amount and maybe even a little less. We can give that like a seven or something. Yeah, so that's one way of doing things. But if you're in Figma, which that's where I am right now, you can just go ahead and download the noise plugin. And I use this all the time. So it basically generates a noise image layer, which you can actually adjust just like in Photoshop. So um, I can go ahead and adjust the density of the noise, the contrast, right? The scale as well. Uh, so super neat stuff, very, very useful. You can press on that check mark and bam, there you go. So I can go ahead and place that in the, um, in the artboard. And of course, uh, what you would need to do here is reduce the opacity to something very low, maybe 10% even less, perhaps 7%, you get the same effect. And I love the, the use of noise because it adds a, it adds that, uh, it adds us almost some texture to the composition. <clears throat> so we're basically done. So we've got the noise down, we've got our blurry gradients, we have our bright retro color palettes, and we have our glass morphism. So yeah, that's it. That's basically all I got for today, guys. I actually have four more, but those are for another video. So stick around for part two. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.